Hello there, it's your friend Phil, project management trainer and coach. Phil is holding his head today. What's the matter, Phil? We're about to talk about EACs. That's the matter. Lots of people still don't know it. Our main aim is at the end of this presentation for you to go from looking like this to that. We want you to understand these EACs for the exam. If you haven't taken our earned value quiz, please visit the link on your screen, put in the password and take it. It'll give you a great run for your time. Let's talk about these EACs one by one. The first one means, hey, I goofed. Let me re-estimate. Let me take this estimate that I gave you at first, throw it in the garbage, because it is garbage, and let me come up with a brand new bottom-up ETC. You can see the project manager saying, oh my gosh, I goofed. Let me do it all over again. Let me take the budget that I first gave you. Let me throw that away and work on a brand new bottom-up ETC. Now you know what a bottom-up estimate is. Bottom-up means you're going down to the granular level, you're taking things apart, you're finding resource rates, you're finding out how much the machinery will cost, you're finding out how much the materials will cost, you're doing a total roll-up for whatever estimate you're trying to put together for the entire task array on the project and you're rolling that up into a final total amount. In other words, you're coming up with a revised estimate. So everything else that you estimated at first makes no sense. It's wrong. So this is going back to the drawing board. So if you really think about it, what do you have here? You have AC plus ETC. Moving to the second one, this is EAC's when the performance was bad in the past, but the budget is still intact for the remaining work. Now, let's take a step back. Look at this one. The first one we looked at means the budget we gave at first makes no sense. You can't use it to predict anything in the future. Now, this second one means that the budget is still intact, even though performance was bad in the past, but the budget is still intact. And because the budget is still intact, you factor in this BAC, this budget at completion, to find out, based on the work, EV, that has been done, this is the work that has been done, and this is the budget that we had initially calculated, based on the work that's been done and the budget, we know how much money we need to complete the work, you see, because the budget still stands. So the work that we've got done is the EV. Actual cost is how much you spent. So if you add up how much you spent plus the total amount of the budget for the project minus the value of the work you've got done, that will give you an estimate at completion based on the budget still being intact. You see? So that is very important to know. Let's take a look at this third one. This one means what is of primary concern is cost performance. Cost performance is what it is. It will not change. And that's why we factor in the CPI, cost performance index. So we take our budget and we say, based on the performance, this is what our EAC is going to be. BAC divided by CPI. Let's take a look at the last one. This is cost and schedule performance are relevant to predict the outcome. So in this case, you're going to factor in what we call the cumulative CPI and the cumulative SPI. Well, SPI for CPI next. I mean... It doesn't really matter once you put them at the bottom. But I hope you're observing what we've got on the left. You can see majority of these formulas have AC on the left, right? So this is another one of those formulas. And if you take a look here, you'll find that the numerator is the same as this one over here. This is exactly the same as this. The only difference between this formula and EAC4 
is that EAC4 is divided by the cumulative SPI times CPI. In fact, sometimes I like to put a superscript on top of the I so that you remember this is not just any old SPI, this is SPI from inception to date. So you cannot use the SPI or CPI for a random month to calculate EAC4. It has to be specific to inception to date for that project. Okay, so when you take a look at what we've seen so far, we have I goofed, let me re-estimate. Performance was bad in the past, but the budget's still intact. Or cost performance is what it is. It won't change. She's smiling because maybe her CPI is good. If CPI is 1, hey, EAC is going to be equal to BAC. You figure out what I'm saying? If your CPI here is 1, then your BAC is going to be equal to your EAC. All right? And then we've got um, the cost and schedule performance are relevant. That means you want to factor in the cumulative SPI and CPI. All right. So those are four formulas. I hope this helps you make sense of it. Again, take a look. Except for one, they all start with AC. They all, except for one, have that plus. And what are they adding in three out of the four? They're adding the estimate to complete. But the estimate to complete is reflected in different ways. In this second one, this is the estimate to complete. If we know our budget and the work done, we can find the ETC if the budget is still intact. And in cases where we want to factor in the cumulative SPI and CPI, then we just use that as the denominator. All right, so I hope that helps. Let's take a look here and see. We have a question from our earned value apocalypse. Now, spoiler alert, if you intend doing that quiz, don't look at the next few slides because they will tell you the answers. So it's better to look at the next few slides after you've done the quiz. All right? All right. Your boss is not impressed with your current estimates. He asks you to calculate EAC based on the worst case scenario incorporating SPI and CPI into the formula. SPI is equal to 0.8, CPI is equal to 0.5, AC is equal to 5, BAC is equal to 12, EV is equal to 6. Well, all of that stuff given for nothing. Because if you look at all of this stuff, and this is a great lesson to learn for your PMP exam, all of that stuff is not needed for the question. It is so not needed that if you just start calculating stuff, you would have wasted a lot of time. What is it really asking you? It's really asking you the lower half of the equation is what? So, if you're finding out the EAC based on the worst case scenario, as they put it, that is going to be the lower half what they mean is the denominator, but they could ask it in a variety of ways in any mock exam or real exam. So, lesson, when you come across these questions on the exam, don't just start calculating. In many instances, you could be given questions that test your logic, that test to see if you know how to apply the formula or what the formula is in layman's terms. So, of course, this is the formula. You already knew that. With that said, take the rest of this quiz at tiny.cc forward slash EVMAPOC2. I'm sure you'll find it very useful. Thank you very much for your audience. Visit www.praiseon.com if you're looking for a power course to get certified to get you prepared for your PMP certification or your CAPM certification, please visit praiseon.com or shoot us an email. All the best. Speak to you soon.